Okay, this is a 2005 Buick Century, um, and it has one safety feature that uh, becomes really annoying off-road, and uh, that is the analog brakes and the traction control. Uh, you may be asking, why would anybody in their right mind take a Buick Century off-road? Well, in order to get to our house, you kind of have to go off-road. We live up a creek. So, for any of uh, the viewers that are watching this that don't regularly watch my videos, I drive through a creek. So, this car has got to drive through a creek to get up here. And not only that, um, analog brakes have their uh, advantages and disadvantages. One thing, uh, a vehicle like this right here, 68 Chevy, there are no analog brakes on this. Actually, there are not even any disc brakes. It's all drums. I can stop this truck just fine. Okay, because I know how to get it to stop. That's one thing about modern vehicles. The analog brakes, if you learn to drive with analog brakes, um, you've really kind of missed out on a little bit of the learning experience with uh, doing an emergency stop with a vehicle without analog brakes. Uh, you have to pump your brakes to get it to stop. And uh, the, the analog brakes do that for you, you know, and uh, in most cases on the road, that is desirable you know it, it will help you there is a uh, trail ride that we go and ride around that sometimes it's a uh, what it is is just a bunch of gravel roads crisscrossing each other and you basically uh, bring your four-wheeler dirt bike or whatever out there <coughs> and you just ride it you know you ride it on the little trails and stuff and uh there's little campgrounds and stuff where you can camp and the camping area is usually where we'll drive around we usually where we can all fit in the car we'll usually take the car or the van the van doesn't have any locks so it don't have to worry about it but the other day or well it's, it's been a while back actually we were up there cruising around and just you know just Mind their own business, cruising around, probably wouldn't doing 20 miles an hour. And some kid on a four-wheeler comes across. You know, we're going this way. And a kid comes across this way from out of nowhere, just flying on a four-wheeler. Didn't even slow down for us. We had to slam on brakes. Well, the, the ending lock was active. And I hit the brakes, and the brake pedal just growled at me. Um, anybody that's hit their brakes on a gravel road knows what I'm talking about. The brake pedal just, you know, it makes that noise. And it does not stop. It just keeps going, which is very dangerous. Um, and we about hit the kid on the four-wheeler, or he about hit us, whatever. But, uh, you know, right then I jumped out and pulled the fuse. That's the easy way, Okay. Let me show you here. So, okay. On this one. Take this loose. Like this. Okay, you can see all your fuses and relays here. And inside here, you have a key that tells you, okay, you can see number one, ABS. Look up here, there's number one. That would be this one right here. Pull this out. And stick that in the car with you while you're off-road. And your analog brakes are disconnected. It resorts back to manual brakes. 
and looks like right here we have a uh, power steering pump leaking. Huh. Pretty soon I'll do a video on how to replace a power steering pump, looks like. But okay, back to the anti-lock brakes. Now, in order to uh, put your brakes, you know, put your anti-lock brakes back on, just put the fuse back in. But that's kind of aggravating having to do that. Every time you go off-road, you have to remember to pop the hood, get out here and pull that fuse out, keep up with the fuse, and then before you get back on the road, put it back in. I mean, you don't have to do that. Uh, most of the time, actually, this fuse is out. Um, I just use conventional brakes. But uh, it would probably be better to be able to turn your analog on and off. So, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, here's what all we got. Show you how I've got stuff hooked up and what all you need. All right. First off, you need a relay. It'd be fairly high amperage. This is 40 amp maximum. And you can see here you have uh, two poles. You can have it as a uh, normally closed, which means that circuit is connected unless there's power supplied to the coil, or normally open which means it's off until there's power supplied. We want it normally closed because we want it on all the time. Okay. There, of course, is the coil. Now, the normally open side is hooked up to... Here is a female connector is what that is. As you can see, the female connector is... Uh, a little bit thicker than, well, I don't have a regular blade connector, but, okay, see how it's big like that? What I did, I took and smashed it down. Because these are pretty thick. They're thicker than a regular connector that, that uh, well, would, for example, slide into this. So I smashed one of these down on this end. This goes in through the relay, through the normally closed part of the relay. This is 87A, actually, as you can see, 87A. Then 30 is going to the fuse holder, which has a 40 amp fuse in it, and also has got the same end on it. These can plug into your fuse box. Now, this will be your ground to go straight to your ground. Of course, that's the one side of your coil. It will be like one of these. Doesn't really matter which one. One of these two wires, the 85 and 86. Okay, let's call that one 85. Okay. Go to your ground. Then the... 86 will go to a wire to lead into the cab of the vehicle. Okay, plenty of wire. On the end of the wire, you will need your switch. Now, see, you can't, uh, you can use two wires if you wanted. I had one that has three conductors in it, so I just used it. Okay, and this will just hook to your switch so that when you turn it on, it connects and turn it off. Disconnects and turns the relay on and off. Okay, to get your hot, you want to make sure, see this fuse needs to be hooked into the hot side of the fuse box. And I'll show you how to do that. How to determine which side is hot. Okay, I use one of these style connectors hook the wire to run to the switch. Of course, the one running back is, of course, going to the 86 terminal on the relay. It's fairly simple to wire up. Um, and you just run this into the car. So, um, 
let's let's go put it on now and I'll show you how to do all that okay we want to find out which one of these two terminals is the constant hot okay um, what you need to do take one side of your meter of course put it on DC around uh, 20 volts and take you know you got your two probes take one and put on a source of ground you can see it right over here this is definitely a ground and then probe check this one this one is nothing this one has got 12 volts on it all right the top one is your constant hot constant hot is going to have to be the one with the fuse plug in the one that's not constantly hot first because you don't want this just hanging out here somewhere you want this one plugged in first this one should go in there now your analog brake system is working right now so okay just drill the hole through here it's gonna be the ground kind of scraped some of the paint off right under it where it'll ground good and then There's your ground hooked up. Okay, may have to cut this cover a little bit. Right in here. Probably not going to do that on this one. Anyway. There's how it's hooked up. Now we have to run this wire to the inside. Okay, here's the other end of the wire. This would have to run up inside the car, and you would have to find a place to stick the switch. That's right here is the switch. Okay. Oh, that needs it bad. Okay, you just hook up wires to the switch. It's just a standard switch. And when you turn this on, you might be able to hear the relay click. Get you a little closer. There is the relay. Okay, one problem that you end up with, which is actually a good reminder on the inside let me see make sure that it's on but inside here time for old change <laughs> that's gonna stay on all right you're gonna have The analog light is going to be on, and also the brake light will be on. They will both be on all the time when you have that switch flipped. And that will be a reminder that you do not have analog brakes. So, you know, that'll, that, might, that might be a good thing. Also, with this car, when you disable the analog brakes, it disables the traction control also. And that helps a lot with, all, you know, coming up the creek and stuff like that. Because this car was horrible trying to come up the creek. Every time you'd get on something slick, which is pretty often. Let me switch this around. Okay, that's about it for, uh, you know... The install i mean obviously you would run it 
run the wire in wherever you want inside you know mount the switch wherever you want it uh, I'm probably personally just going to leave the fuse out um, I did all this just to show y'all how you can make it where you can switch it on and off safely uh, but I'm gonna I'm, I'm just gonna leave my fuse out I know it's probably not a desirable way to do it for most people but I don't mind it and uh, it helps me because every time I would go in and out of the creek I would have to turn it off turn it back on turn it off turn it back on and uh, I think it's just fine uh, just using conventional brakes that's what I'm gonna do but anyway um, the traction control on this car is controlled also by the analog brake system. And the reason that it uses the analog brake system is it uses the wheel sensors to tell if the front wheels are spinning or not. And the moment they start spinning, it, it uh, cuts down the throttle. It's the most aggravating thing in the world because sometimes <laughs> in mud or whatever or... Uh, something slippery you need to throw a little bit of it back sometimes to make the car go <laughs> and this thing when it slips it just it just pretty much is like you're not even giving it any gas so yeah the traction control being off is i love that uh i don't go around spinning the tires but uh you can in this car now actually a buick Sentra will absolutely uh spin pretty good um, I don't like doing that because tires cost money and I'm cheap. But anyway, I guess that's probably going to be my little video today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.